Alrighty. <clears throat> Oh, wait, wait. There's something in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Maria Park, and this is Approach to Nerd. And in this episode, I am here with my friend, Blurred Ernie. He's from Blurred Without Fear. His channel will be linked below. Awesome channel. Please subscribe. Um, the purpose of this episode, in collaboration with my wonderful friend, Ernie, is that if you've watched my previous Psylocke video, you know I am a huge Revanche fan. And so when I heard about a series called Fallen Angel, that actually focused a little bit on her past or her backstory, I got really excited. But then I started hearing about the reviews about Fallen Angel, and I kind of was a little hesitant to read it. So I decided to go to my friend Ernie here to get the <laughs> real story on what's going on with Fallen Angel. So without further ado, take it away. <laughs> Okay, so Fallen Angels, for those who don't know, Fallen Angels is a comic. Uh, it's part of the Dawn of X uh, relaunch of X-Men titles by Brian Hill and, Zim uh, and uh, Zymon Kudronsky. Uh, basically, this story is supposed to focus on characters that are more or less wayward uh, souls amongst all the recently... Uh, uh, brought together mutants on uh, Krakoa. So that's why you have uh, not just uh, Revanche, who, you know, some made Quanin, who is now, at this particular point, she is 100% Psylocke. There's, she, this, this is, she went from being, I think, what was it, prior to this, she was, uh, she actually went by the name Nobody, or No One, I can't remember exactly, and then now, she is Psylocke, she's wearing, you know, the outfit, everything. Um... Now, and this is also why you have characters like uh, Cable, who was technically Kid Cable, but now he's just Cable because he killed Cable. Uh, so yeah, it's a younger version of Cable from the future, younger than the version we we are used to seeing. And uh, I don't even know how that's going to go. Uh, <laughs> and then you've also got X-23. And then later on, they bring in characters like Bling and Husk, but yeah, whatever. Uh, the, main, the main thing about the story is the fact that uh, you know, Quanin discovers that she, A, had a secret child that she had for forgotten about completely. Uh, and uh, that child, uh, you know, you, you're, you're kind of learning about this child and why, uh, you know, she didn't know or anything like that. It, it, it gets that that part really is not that important, um, at least as far as they've made me feel. Um, and then, of course, there's a new threat by the name of Apoth, who they kind of spin off to you as being another one of her secret children, uh, but is actually not. Uh, <laughs> but basically, he's he, he's an AI, more or less. Uh, and it's basically kind of supposed to give you the same vibes if you read House of uh, X, Powers of Ten, uh, you know, uh, during its run where they had the, what was it, the Human Machine Ascendancy. It's supposed to kind of evoke those same vibes. It does not do a good job of that. The main problem is, and, and I'm going to right now, I have very little positive to say about this comic because, yeah, it, it doesn't have, you know, revenge. Is, 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 is it cool that she finally has a, a moment to shine? I think that's great. I think it's great that she gets to kind of lead a team. Here's my problem with it, though. The book is as dull as dishwater. Uh, it just, it's, it's, it's bad. It's a bad book. And I normally don't like talking, you know, smack about, you know, uh, writers, artists, whatever, because I feel like, you know, Hey, I want, I, I don't, I don't want to bring down the industry, but in this particular case, I'm going to do it because the reason why Fallen Angels doesn't work is because it's a poor man's ghost in the shell. And some people will see that and go, well, I don't see that comparison. Well, I'm going to tell you why you should, because there's a lot of talk of, you know, what constitutes being alive? A lot of existential conversations, especially between uh, not just uh, Quanin and Mr. Sinister, but even amongst uh, uh, Quanin and Magneto. Uh, not even just between those two characters, but also between uh, one of Apoth's uh, disciples and, uh, and Cable. So there's a lot of talk like that, like the same types of conversations you would hear or see in a Ghost in the Shell anime or manga or whatever, you will see those same conversations here. Uh, not only that, but I feel like it kind of undoes, it kind of undoes character development for certain characters. Like 
I feel like X-23 takes the biggest L in regards to character growth in this comic because she's struggling to control her rage. Something that, and, and maybe, you know, at me, you know, youtube.com forward slash blurred without fear, at blurred minus fear on Twitter, y'all know the vibes. But <laughs> I feel like she'd already grown past that by this point. And then somehow now she is literally begging Quanin to help her figure her shit out. And I don't get it, but it's whatever. Um, other problems that I have with it are mostly the fact that it's the the art to me in this comic is very good. It's very good art, uh, and it's also one of the few times in life you'll ever see Psylocke drawn to look like an actual Asian woman, like an actual Japanese woman. That's the first you'll ever see of that uh, in a long time. And but at the same time, I feel like the art drags everything down because all the colors are super muted. Everything is like grays and blacks, and it may as well have just been a black and white comic. Yeah. It may as well have been. That's just how muted everything is. It's just like, I'm not gonna lie. It was a chore for me to read. Uh, what else? I could definitely say that of, I, this one is not so much uh, indicative of the comic itself, but just what it's up against. There are five other X titles that are out right now in conjunction with Fallen Angels, which is about to end anyway, uh, because the writer had uh, previous obligations, prior obligations in Hollywood with uh, some television commitments. Uh, so he can't write Fallen Angels full time. So he's going to be stepping away from it. And the comic is supposed to go on hiatus until he can come back. As far as I'm concerned, it could go on indefinite uh, hiatus. Uh, <laughs> but... It's just, it, but no, it's, it's one of those situations where I felt like the comics it was up against are infinitely better than it. It's like, okay, you've got X-Men, you've got X-Force, you've got Marauders, you've got New Mutants, you've got Excalibur. All of those comics are infinitely better. And I'm going to tell you that's saying something considering the fact that of those five comics, only three of them I think are actually essential reads. Wow. So, like, uh, X-Force being number one, uh, X-Men and Marauders kind of switching back and forth between two and three. And then Excalibur and uh, New Mutants kind of trade four and five, depending on what issue it is. But the thing is, it, it, it's sad to me that Fallen Angels literally factors, and it's a more personal story, I get it, but it literally has no bearing on anything else. If you didn't read this title and then later on, you know, there was some big major X-Men event, you don't have to go back and read Fallen Angels. It's not important. And then I guess if you really want to, you know, get into the, the other main thing about it, it's just the fact that when you find out exactly what's up with Apoth, you're just going to be kind of like... <sighs> yeah. Very lackluster. Well, I mean, the reveal is lackluster because, and, and I guess I'm going to go ahead and spoil this. Yeah, I'll put a spoiler tag. You're, 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 you're not gonna you're not gonna read this anyway. Uh, <laughs> look, <laughs> Fallen Angels. The whole thing with the Apoth is that when you discover that A, he is not Psylocke's actual child, you discover that B, he's an AI, which you yeah, know that's that's a thing. And then of course C, you discover that the reason why he's around is because Quanin was originally supposed to kill this not child. Uh, but the not child was locked behind a door and she had killed all these other people to get to this door. And she was, she was instructed to kill whatever was on the other side of that door. She didn't know what it was, but the AI, because it was a newly born AI, it starts crying and emitting these, the, the sounds of a baby crying and Quanin, for whatever reason, just, I guess, because she felt guilty over, uh, the, <clears throat> loss, quotey fingers loss, of her secret child that she's not even supposed to remember anyway, <laughs> um, she chooses to not open the door and even find out what's on the other side. And because of that, Apoth then kind of regards her as his mother, and it just, it gets real dumb. But just, just know that, yeah, I normally don't like telling people to not support a comic. But I'm going to tell you, don't. <laughs> because if you do, they will just keep making these. <laughs> and that ain't good for nobody. And I, and I, and I want to I point this out. I'm not shitting on you know, Brian Hill 
or Zymon Kadronsky. I think individually, independent of each other, I think they work very well. They do very good work. I've loved Brian Hill's other work. He did work on Killmonger. I thought he did a great job with that. I have I can't remember exactly what all I remember uh, Zymon Kadronsky from, but as an artist, but once again, I don't have a problem with either of these people individually. It's just that together, I think they came up with something that was not good. And case closed. There you go. Um, it's for for a Quanon lover. That is very disheartening only because we don't have a lot of her. And you did tell me that she is going to be, is she going to X-Force? No, uh, which w- would have made more sense. She's yeah. going to be going to a new group called the Hellions. She's like, um, like Emma Frost Hellions? or uh, Kind of, sort of, but not really. It's basically going to be a group of mutants under the tutelage of Mr. Sinister. So this is a team led by Mr. Sinister. And I'm going to go on a limb and say Havoc is very likely the the, the field leader because he is in the comic as well. But uh, Havoc, Wild Child, uh, uh, you know, well, now Psylocke, uh, and there's a few others whose Polaris? names... Uh, no, Polaris is an X-Factor. Oh, this is crazy. Uh, Polaris, <laughs> uh, because, okay, so just for, for... And this is just to tell people so you know what's going on. Okay, so you've got X-Men, you've got uh, Marauders, you've got X-Force, Excalibur, New Mutants, Fallen Angels. That's six titles. Well, after all this, and these other titles are still going to keep going even though Fallen Angels isn't, they're about to add Hellions, which is what we just talked about, there will be X Factor, which I have, uh, I believe, is Polaris Prestige, who some of you may remember as uh, Rachel Gray. Uh, I forget what other characters are in that one. They're also going to have Children of the Atom, which is going to focus on entirely new characters who are basically kind of like younger mutants who have similar power sets to the original X Men, uh, which you know the five piece original recipe X Men. Y'all know who those are. I'm not yep. going to rehash that for you. <laughs> um, and then you've also got uh, – there's going to be uh, a Wolverine title. Uh, there's also going to be a uh, – Cable is going to be getting a title. Oh, wow. And then there will also be uh, the uh, giant size X-Men one-shots. Uh, the giant size X-Men – basically not really one-shots, but like it will be, be a series of giant size X-Men issues that focus on different characters. They have one that's going to focus on uh, Marvel Girl and Emma Frost together. They're supposed to have others going to focus on other characters. Uh, and then also last but certainly not least – is going to be the, I think it's Fantastic Four X-Men or is it X-Men Fantastic Four? It's one of those two. But it'll be a comic where the Fantastic Four and the X-Men are finally going to link up because you got to remember Jonathan Hickman, famous for writing the Fantastic Four. And now that Marvel has the rights to all their stuff, again, uh, Fantastic Four and X-Men, they're finally putting those two together because one of the biggest mysteries in House of X was that in issue number one, they they revised John the Hickman revised the list of Omega level mutants. He pared the list down oh, to like yeah. I think like ten. And uh, Powerhouse, who is um, uh, Franklin Richards, he was on that list, and they made a point to put his name in red, saying that he had not sided with Krakoa uh, when when they put the call out saying, "Hey, all mutants come to Krakoa." Franklin Richards was one of the ones that he had very clearly said, I am not with this. Uh, so now they're bringing all that together. This is finally coming to a head in a mini series that will focus on. That's awesome. Yeah, all that. So we don't know what's going to happen. Franklin Richards may or may not join the X-Men. He may stay with the Fantastic Four or maybe the Fantastic Four and the X-Men. will, you know, because you got two of its principal members have a whole ass mutant son. Probably work and then, the of course, uh, Betsy Braddock is now taking her brother's place as Captain, as Captain Britain. Britain. Well, she she has done this in the past, but yeah, it looks Whoa, like a yeah. permanent thing now. Yeah. All right, so there you go. Wrong, Fallen Angel, don't support it. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, no. So I'm not even it. gonna bother bu- you know, buying it. I guess I, I'm reading it. <laughs> I, I would say you, know, if you want to read a good X Men title. Uh, either read X Men, read uh, 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 X uh, Men, X Force, Marauders. Those are all infinitely better. Uh, some people may like Excalibur if you're if you want something more of like a magic or fantasy bend. Uh, and then New Mutants because their story kind of flip flops from being in space to being on Earth because they're focusing on two completely separate uh, uh, cells of the New Mutants. Right. The, you got the OG New Mutants, and you got, like, the new New Separate Mutants. Teams, yeah. Uh So, yeah, it just depends on what you want. But uh, the OG teams in space, the new New Mutants are 
uh, on Earth. So yeah, it just it depends on what you want. Or hell, wait for the other ones and see what you like. But uh, Jonathan Hickman has come out and said that you don't have to read every title. He said you really only need like two or three. So not that connecting that yeah. you'll be kind of spoiled if you don't know what's going on. With right. You. Okay. And, and if you don't, then you can just come find me because I'll yep. probably Blair be talking about fear, it. Without fear, he will be talking about it. So that is awesome. Thank you. Um, you have made up my mind that I'm not going to be checking out Fallen <laughs> Angel. <laughs> I, I, I still want you to read it, though. But I, like, I'll, I I'll, give, I'll give it to you. I will give you. You give it to me, and I'll, I'll, and I'll, the, and I'll yeah. glance at it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, I'll look at the beautiful artwork. Well, just, just be like, trash, trash, <laughs> trash. trash. But yeah. it is it is very disheartening because I am a big Quanin fan. I've loved Quanin since the '90s, since we first revealed her to be the revanche portion of the Psylocke and revanche merge. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please check out some back issues of how they switch souls and how Spiral and all that got involved. That's a really long, complicated <laughs> story yeah. that I really don't have time in this video to go over. But yeah, it I gets do, real problematic. It gets problematic. And check out my Psylocke video because I do talk about that a lot. But I am really, really, really disheartened about Quanin because my girl needs better representation. So hopefully in her new Hellion series, she will have that. But I think the overall, if I were grading this, I'd give it a big fat F, meaning Fallen Angel. And I'm not F not for the title. It has failed. It has failed this city and it has failed this video. So, but don't listen to us. You you make your own mind up and please drop a comment below if you did like it. If you think that we're both crazy, especially Ernie, because I haven't read it. I mean, <laughs> then, I'll, then let us know. I'll take that. <laughs> take that. I You'll am crazy. <laughs> and if you would like to sign up for Jury Duty, hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to know who's next on the Nerd Bell, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. But hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.